Okay. Um, I want to reintroduce my family to you. This is Josephine or Jojo, and this is Micah. And I love them. They are some of the best gifts God has ever given me. I tell my wife all the time that, you know, she's the second best gift God has ever given me. Uh, Jesus first, <laughs> then her. And then these guys, I just love them. They are good. They are very good. In fact, uh, we remember, you know, people would always tell us, oh, it's best if you have one of each. You know, I mean, it's good if you have all boys or all girls, but if you can get one boy, one girl, oh, it's good. And and they were right. Um, they balance each other. They give us such delight and happiness and fun. We want to change it for the world. It is good. It is very good. And we'll get back to that at the end of this video. But for now, say hi to everybody. Hi. Say subscribe, please. Subscribe, please. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Go play. Go play. Okay, so let's jump in here. Again, this is not my expertise. I'm not, uh, I don't have a doctorate in this subject at all. This is just so interesting. I, I wanted to share it with all of you. The Chinese word for create doesn't make sense outside of the Genesis account. I know this is crazy, but look at this, man. According to Genesis, then the Lord God formed man or mankind, Adam first, of dust from the ground. He was a dirt man. And he breathed into his nostrils with his mouth the breath of life. And man became a living being. This is very distinctive. This is very peculiar creation account. But let's look at ancient Chinese writing. How do you write create in Chinese? You start, of all things, with dust or dirt. This is the radical symbol for dirt or dust. Under it, you have a mouth. God forms out of the dust of the earth a man. Dust of the earth, a man. And he breathed in him the breath of life. What is the abbreviation for life? A little comma up there. Life. And man got up and walked away a living being. And that is a radical for motion or walking. All right? That's create. How do you write create? That's how you write create. It makes no sense outside of the creation account according to Genesis. Let's go on. How about Adam's counterpart? How about Eve? Now, God notices that it is not good for man to be alone, but he wants to make sure Adam notices. So he gives Adam a job. He says, Adam, I'm going to bring to you all of the animals, the birds, the creepy crawlies, the beasts, and you're going to name them. And whatever you name them, that's going to be their name. And so God does this all day long. God brings a parade of animals to Adam and Adam names them all. Okay. By the end of the day, Adam is pretty tired. But he notices that there is something about all of the other species. They are alike, but they are different. They are more alike than they are different, but they are different enough to complement one another. They aren't identical. They complement. He notices there's a Mr. Tiger and Mrs. Tiger, or whatever language he used. Mr. Frog, Mrs. Frog, Mr. Ostrich, Mrs. Ostrich. There's a Mr. Adam and nothing. So Adam notices his need. By this time, it is late in the day. The sun is setting in the west. And this is how you write the word west in Chinese. West. Adam notices his need. This, check it out, is the word for need. Notice, it's west 
over the character for woman. That's right. Now, for those of us who don't know Chinese, we we, we think, oh, it's a bunch of、uh, toothpicks or something. But no, it's West, and it's a woman. It's a Western woman. What does this mean? Unless Adam has some kind of cowgirl fetish, all right?、Um, it makes no sense. But what does Adam realize? He realizes as he looks at this beautiful sunset over this great garden that he is alone and he needs a compliment. And this is the Chinese word for compliment or need or necessity, want. It's not a whim. It is a desperate, legitimate need and necessity for something. West and woman. It makes total sense in the light of scripture. So Adam realizes he has a need, but there is none. So God causes a great slumber to fall upon Adam, and as he sleeps, God performs the first recorded. Operation. I need a new pen. This is running out of ink. This is the symbol or the character for border. Okay, border. God enters the border of Adam's skin, as it were. And what is the word for enter? This is more like the print form of enter. This is how you would write it. God. Enters into Adam's border, the border of his skin, and the Bible tells us that he pulls out a rib, which he forms into a woman. Now look at this. Here's border. Here's enter. Do you know what this is? This is a real word. It is a word in Chinese. It means inside. Inside. To this day, Chinese men will refer to their wives as their inside person. Men, we don't allow many people inside, but we'll allow maybe our wife to know our dreams, our aspirations. We are vulnerable to them. We only allow our wives that place to come inside and know who we really are. But what if you do this? What if you take a form of this word instead? You write it this way. You have a border, and it looks like you have two people: a person, run, a person coming out, as it were. It's like a stop action、uh, photograph. Person, God enters Adam's side. Pulls out a rib, which he forms into a whole other person. This man is the symbol for flesh or meat. Now, it makes totally no sense at all, unless the early Chinese were cannibals. Okay, it makes no sense. It is said that as pork bellies go, so goes the Chinese economy. Chinese love pork. In fact, to this day. If you were referred to meat or flesh in Chinese and not specify the type of meat, in other words, you would just say meat, fried meat, and not fish meat or chicken meat or cow meat or pig meat. You just said meat. It would always and forever mean pork. That's how much Chinese love. Pork. If I were to come up with a character that meant meat or flesh to an average Chinese person, I might write something like this: Ryan, <laughs> a pig, because to the average Chinese person, pig is synonymous with meat. But no, this is what the Chinese came up with. It makes no sense unless you look at the biblical account. After God creates beautiful Eve, He presents her to Adam, and he is so overwhelmed that he spouts poetry. This 
is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I shall call you woman for you were taken out of man. You see, she is taken out of his own flesh. And he uses that term, that word flesh to describe her. It makes total sense. If the ancient Chinese knew of and believed in the Genesis account. Now, Adam and Eve are now together in paradise. They are like king and queen of this domain. And in fact, that's how God describes it. Then God said, and I read, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule, rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Oh, how beautiful. There is a male and a female that represents all of God's wisdom and character and personality on earth. They are God's co-regents to rule. Does the Chinese language show this? Well, I think it does. Adam and Eve are the first pair. Now, when I was growing up, there was a very popular song that began two hearts, two hearts, two hearts that beat as one. <laughs> but you know, Chinese, we, we, we live to eat. And so in Chinese, we, we, we don't draw little hearts. In Chinese, we draw mouths, okay? Because every person's got a mouth because you got to eat. And this is the symbol for couple or pair, two mouths tied together, hooked them together, right? That makes sense. But you take this couple, you take this pair, and you put a roof over their head. What does that mean? Maybe it means household. Maybe it means family, right? That would make sense. A couple is the most basic family. So that means family, right? No, <laughs> no, man, it means palace. Palace. Why would a roof over a couple mean palace unless they were thinking about Adam and Eve and this passage? Let us make man in our image to rule. And that's our stewardship from God to take care of this earth and to manage and to rule over the fish and the birds and the animals. Adam and Eve lived in paradise like the first king and queen in a palace. They were the first. How would you write first? Everybody knows, and most people know, in Chinese and, and I think in Japanese too, one dash means one. Two dashes means two. It makes total sense. Three dashes makes three. Why would you use something that looks like two to write the word first or primary? That's the word for first, primary. It looks like a two with two legs, like two humans. Huh? It make, doesn't make sense at all unless you're referring to the first couple, right? The first pair of humans. That means first, they are first, they are primary. And you put a roof over that, and that means complete. That is the word for complete. Finally, Adam was complete. He was lonely, he was without. He had a legitimate aching need for a companion and a helper. And God made him one out of his own side. He pulled a human out and they became the first couple and they were complete together. God put them both in an enclosed garden to keep them safe 
to give them an area of creativity and cultivation. He put them together, the dirt man. Okay, and there's your symbol for dirt. Okay. God spoke to them as a friend. There's a symbol for mouth. There's a shorthand, a shortcut to write man, two legs, and then his woman coming from his side, right? Coming from the rib, coming from his side, out of his side. And they lived together in a garden. And that, dude, that is the word for garden. It doesn't make sense. There's dirt, there's a mouth, there's a couple, a man and a woman in an enclosure. It only makes sense when you look at the Garden of Eden. I introduced my kids to you in the beginning of this video and I said, oh, how wonderful it is that we have one of each. It is good, it is very good to have a woman, a female, and a man. That's a shortcut to say man. Woman, man, together. Do you know that this is a word? This is a Chinese word for good. For good, for very good. And that is exactly what God said. Why would man and woman together mean good? Well, you know, it could be a lot of things but it makes the most sense when you look at the word of God. You know, it's interesting. God makes light and darkness and he says, oh, it's good. He makes water and land and he says, oh, it's good. He separates the water and land. He makes green plants and herbs and trees. He makes animals and birds and creepy crawlies. And every time, every day he says, it is good, it is good. But when he makes Adam, and Eve, and he puts them together in relationship with each other and with himself, he says, it's very good. And that is the Chinese word for good. You know, there are many words like this, and we'll continue to investigate and study many of them that are like fingers pointing to Genesis. Is it time, maybe today, that you and I make our peace with the God of Genesis, with the God of the ancient Chinese, with the God that created every ethnicity, every nationality? See you next time.